Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank each of you for joining with us for Sunday, Sunday School Bible Study, coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministry. We have a great and wonderful lesson for today, Sorrow Before Trial. Sorrow Before Trial. As we know, we are moving into the 1st of December, and uh, we began during this time of the year to remember and to bring back, not to allow ourselves to forget. Uh the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Amen. It reminds me of uh, how God uh, told the children of Israel to, 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 to speak of it day and night, to, to, to uh, bring uh, to memory, uh, to remembrance to all family and, and uh, what had taken place, to, to tie the words around their, uh, uh, the tales of their uh, garments as a reminder and to always speak of it, to speak of it uh, uh, at, at meals, to speak of it continuously, that it is not forgotten. And we are to um, speak of uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior as to make sure that we don't forget uh, the, the awful uh, things that he went through, just that we might have the right to the uh, eternal life. Amen. As we say that our lesson, sorrow before triumph, and our facts for this lesson is to discover that Jesus was born into this world to save us from our sins, and that this salvation requires his death and burial. Lesson text, Matthew 1, verse 18 to 21, John 12, verses 1 through 8. Speaking uh, three is three different sections of this lesson. Uh, number one, a momentous announcement coming from Matthew 1, verse 18 to 21. Number two is extraordinary devotion coming from John 12, 1 through 3. And number three, a deceitful objection coming from John 12, 4 through 8. Amen. Our related scriptures is Matthew 26, verse 6 through 13, Mark 14, verses 3 through 9, Luke 7, verses 37 to 39. A man time between 6 or 5 BC, AD 30. Plays Nazareth uh, in Bethany. Our golden text, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached, in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, uh, be told for a memorial of her. Matthew 26 and verse 13. Our questions for this lesson is, number one, how did Mary come to be with a child? Number two, what was Joseph considering regarding Mary? Number three, who were Mary, Martha, and Lazarus? Number four, after she anointed Jesus' feet with the spignard, what further act of devotion and honor did Mary perform toward him? Number five, what reason did Judas offer for objecting to Mary's extravagant offering? Number six, what significance did Jesus ascribe to Mary's act of devotion. And number seven, how would we understand Jesus' statement concerning the poor? How should we understand Jesus' statement concerning the poor? Amen. This is a wonderful and great lesson. But before we get started, I want to ask if anything you see, it touches your heart, soul, or spirit. Or you have any questions or comments, please feel free to jot them at the bottom of the screen below, and I will get to them as soon as possible. Also, if you would, subscribe to my channel and join with us as we gather together to study and meditate on the word of the Lord. Also, if you would like prayer, please let me know in the uh, below, uh, and I will add your name to the prayer list. Amen. And also the email address is at the bottom of the screen below. And so if you have anything that you want to uh, ask about or uh, concerning, please feel free to use the email address and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Amen. We're going to get ready to move into our lesson, but first we're going to have prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into no temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Dear God in heaven, I thank you, Father. I thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you for making a way out of nowhere. We thank you for leading and guiding us in your true path of righteousness, Father. We thank you for being with us when we go out and when we come in. We thank you, Father, for that you are God and beside you there is none other. Lord, we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, Father. Lord, we ask that as we go into your word, Father, that you do open our eyes that we see, our ears that we hear, and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that resides in each of us that has claimed and accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that he does unction us, that we shall do and follow Christ's will and not be to be doers of the word and not hearers only. We thank you, Father, that as we accepted you in our life, that we did not stop uh, uh uh, repenting of our sin and we did not stop gi and give up on th uh, what we are to do. It is a continuous journey, Father, and we thank you, Father, that you give us the strength, the courage to follow you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, all right as we stated, sorrow before triumph. Sorrow before triumph. Talking uh, concerning sent to save by his death sent to save by his death. Amen. We know that Jesus Christ uh, came that he may die, that we may be saved. Matthew 1, 18 to 21, uh, in scripture lesson text read, the birth of Jesus Christ. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Amen. You know, this is a powerful uh, 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 thing to, to see here where Mary accepts uh, the, 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 the job of uh, caring our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at the price of being talked about even more, of being uh, uh, in pregnancy while being engaged to someone. And it is a death sentence for many that does such a thing. But she was willing to go forward in this. Amen. We know the birth of Jesus Christ was different from any of the births mentioned in any gene genealogy. There we found the repeated formula, A begat B. Uh, each, you know, when you go through the genealogy, it said this one begat this one and that one begat the other one. Now we have the record of a birth without a human father. The facts surrounding this miraculous conception are stated with dignity and simplicity. Mary had been promised in marriage to Joseph, but the wedding had not yet taken place. In the New Testament time, betrothal was a form of engagement, but more binding than any engagement today. And it could be broken only by a divorce. It was like being married before being married. Although an engaged couple did not live together until the marriage ceremony, unfaithfulness on the part of the betrothed was treated as adultery and punished by death. Because to my understanding, the uh, the, the the man had already paid 
a portion of the uh, endowment that had to be paid. So for you to uh, mess that up, uh, they were going to get rid of you. Amen. During the time of her betrothal, the Virgin Mary became pregnant by miracle of the Holy Spirit. An angel had previously announced this mysterious event to Mary. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the, of the highest will overshadow you. Luke 1 and 35, a cloud of suspicion and scandal hung over Mary and all of human history. There had never been a virgin birth when people saw an unwed woman who was pregnant, they had only one possible explanation. And as we look at this, uh, I was uh, listening to some um, Jewish uh, information on the uh, uh, the uh, uh, information on the. Uh, one, the person that's being married and the male that is marrying this uh, uh, young lady, if they, uh, like I said, if uh, Joseph was to put her away privately, that would make the, 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 the problem fall back on him as if he had did something wrong. And then he would now be accused of sleeping with her before she got married. Uh, uh, and, and before the time come for him to consummate the marriage. So either way it go, it was it was going to be a bad situation. Number one, her being pregnant and hadn't got hadn't completed the marriage vows. Now Joseph uh, willing to was going to put her away, but he was going to do it privately so everybody would know what was going on. But if he did so, it would make him. Uh, on the other hand, be as the villain in the situation. Even Joseph did not yet know the true explanation of Mary's condition. He might have been indignant at his fiancée in two counts. First, her apparent unfaithfulness to him. That was like uh, cheating on your husband. She, she you know, uh, for her to get pregnant at that time was like she was uh, cheating on her husband, not on someone that she was engaged to uh, as they, uh, because for them to uh, stop it at this time would have to go through a, a divorce. So she would be considered cheating on her husband and that would be the reason for them to be willing to kill her. And second, Though, though innocent, he would almost inevitably be accused of compl complicity. Complicity, his move for Mary and desire for justice led him to decide to break the betrothal by quiet divorce. He wished to avoid the public disgrace, which normally accompanied such an action. Now, although that they were in uh, Egypt and, and uh, uh, they was in, they were not under their own uh, uh, ownership. They were not. They did not have their own personal king. They was under the Egypt king at this time. So it would make it. They wouldn't be able to stone her to death, but they could bring her to the court uh, and have uh, you know you know something severe put upon her because of this. And so while this Gentile. This gentle and deliberate man was mapping his strategy to protect Mary. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The salutation, Joseph, son of David, was doubtless designed to stir up the consciousness of his royal pedigree and to prepare him for the unusual advent of Israel's Messiah King. He should have no misgivings about marrying Mary. Any suspicious concern in her purity were groundless. Her pregnancy was a miracle of the Holy Spirit. The angel then revealed the unborn child sex, uh, child sex name and his mission. Mary would bear a son. He was to be named Jesus, which means Jehovah is salvation on Jehovah the Savior. True to the, his name, he would save his people from their sins. This child of destiny was Jehovah himself. 
visiting earth to save people from the penalty of sin, for the power of sin, and eventually from the very presence of sin. Mary anoints Jesus at Bethany. Number uh, uh, John 12, verses 1 through 8. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spignard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ornament. Then said he, then said one of his disciples, Judas Isacret, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ornament sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was the, was a thief and had a bag and had the bag and bear what and and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. Amen. We see uh, Judas uh, uh, stepping forward as if to care uh, for Jesus and but yet still we know uh, that he did not in, in his, uh, what he did uh, in afterwards, after this took and take place. Amen. Jesus anointed at Bethany. The home in Bethany was a place where Jesus loved to be. And we noticed that he do uh, visit there, uh, uh, is spoke of more than uh, the regular visits. So there he enjoyed sweet fellowship with Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. And coming to Bethany at this time, he was Hum, he was humanely speaking, humanly speaking, exposing himself to danger because nearby Jerusalem was headquarters for all the forces that were arrayed against him and that they were ready to take him and kill him. In spite of the many who were opposed to Jesus, there were still a few hearts which beat true to him. Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with the Lord, and Martha served. The scripture does not say anything about what Lazarus saw or heard from the time he died until he was raised again. Perhaps he had been forbidden by God to divulge any such information. <clears throat> Several instances are recorded in the Gospels where the Lord Jesus was anointed by a woman. No two incidents are exactly alike, but this incident is generally thought to parallel uh, uh, Mark 14, verses 3 through 9. Mary's devotion to Christ calls her to take this pound of very costly oil of Spignard and anoint his feet. She was saying in effect that there was nothing too valuable to give to Christ. He is worthy of everything that we have and are. And man, Mary uh, 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 really, uh, she, she was one of the few that really showed uh, how she felt uh, about Jesus and she wanted uh, him to know this and uh, this was very important that uh, this take place at this time. Each time we meet Mary, she is at the feet of Jesus. There she is. Here she is wiping his feet with her hair. Since a woman's hair is her glory, she was laying her, she was laying her glory, as it were, at his feet. Needless to say, Mary herself would have carried the fragrance of the perfume for some time after this. Thus, 
when Christ is worship, the worshipers themselves carry away something of the fragrance of that moment. When you truly get into the worship and praise with the Lord, it don't it, it don't it don't end when service ends. You still have that uh, uh, that fragrance, that aroma of of, of, of excitement, of, of of blessedness, of connection with the Lord. Amen. No house is so filled with pleasant aroma as the house where Jesus is given his rightful place. Here, the flush is seen intruding into this most scarred of occasions. The one who was about to betray his Lord could not stand to see precious oil used in this way. Judas did not consider Jesus to be worth 300 denarii. He felt that the perfume the perfume should have been sold and given to the poor. But this was sheer hypocrisy. He cared no more for the poor than he did for the Lord. He was about to portray him, not for 300 denarii, but for a tenth of that amount. <clears throat> that uh, Rye Well says that anyone could follow Jesus, follow Christ as a disciple, for three years, see all his miracles, hear all his teaching, receive at his hand repeated kindness, be counted an apostle, and yet proven rotten at heart in the end. All this at first sight appears incredible and impossible, but yet the case of Judas shows plainly that the thing can be done. Few things perhaps are so little realized as the extent of the fall of man. <clears throat> and man is known and will betray people that they have been with, they have been around uh, for, for great lengths of time. John was quick to add that Judas did not say this because he had any real love for the poor, but because he was a thief and was greedy. Judas had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. The Lord answered in effect, do not pervert, prevent her from doing this. She has kept this oil for the day of my burial. She is getting me ready for my death. Now she wants to lavish it on me in an act of affection and worship. She should be permitted to do so if this is what she wants to do. And then on top of this, if this is her money, she should be able to do with it as she please, not what you want done with it. There would never be a time when there would not be poor people on whom Others might lavish their kindness. But the Lord's ministry on earth was swiftly drawing to a close. Mary would not always have the opportunity to use this oil upon him. This should remind us that spiritual opportunities are passing. We should never delay doing what we can for the Savior following in his footsteps, being obedient to him, being a, a doer of his word and not a hero only. Because the Savior is coming and we don't know when our end is either. As we look at the principle of this lesson, we are to understand that as our conquering hero, Jesus has defeated the sin in our lives and gives victory over sin. As we accept him, walk with him, repent and turn from our ways, then we are in his love and care. Amen. How do we apply this to our life today? We turn away from the sin that Jesus' death 
and resurrection has freed us from, then we turn to God in Christ. We can't stay out there and do what we were doing and just say the words that we turn and we repent. We have to do. We have to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Amen. I pray you meditate on this great and wonderful lesson and have a blessed day. God bless you.